Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. Postmortem of my Blitz game number 391. My opponent played e4, and I went for e5, and he plays f4, the king's gambit. So since I've been doing this series on the uh, king's gambit, I felt like I needed to accept this, even though uh, my opponent was higher rated here. So it's always a bit of a gamble going into a uh, really sharp tactical position with a higher rated opponent. But knight f3, he plays the main line, and so I follow suit. I play g5, holding on to the f-pawn. For the moment, he plays h4 to undermine it, and I play g4. And he plays knight e5, the Kieseritsky gambit. And you can see that's the uh, the main way the king's gambit is played. Um, I go knight f6, the top move. And um, he goes bishop to c4, just developing a piece. So... You see, the engine is not uh, completely impressed here with, uh, with uh, white's play so far after d5, which is a very key move in uh, a lot of these uh, tactical gambit type uh, systems with the e4, e5. If you can get in this move d5 and shut out the bishop in some way, you really uh, have, have saved yourself uh, from a lot of trouble. So I should have a decent position in the opening, but um, this is the, the main way it's played, so it's not like... Uh, this is unexpected to my opponent. He takes, and I take. And, uh, of course, the computer evaluations in these complicated positions need to be uh, taken with a grain of salt. Uh, it's, uh, it may be a position which is technically, with the best play, better for black, but uh, it can be very difficult to, uh, to find the moves. And your opponent may be on a ground where, uh, where he's a little more familiar with what's going on than you are. So uh, uh, after the move, d4. <clears throat> Starting right about here, I've sort of run out of uh, moves that I know, and I have to improvise. It looks like um, the engine is suggesting that castling is, is a move here. It's also in the opening book. Um, or knight h5. Knight h5, I think I, I actually considered this move. Holding on to the f-pawn is, is a good idea, because it keeps this bishop shut out of the game. You'll see uh, what happens in the game. I just played a developing move. But what... Uh, you know, I, I worry about in these positions, and what White is playing for is he's trying to make a lot of forcing moves and um, trying to get his pieces developed and hoping that you'll just react to all his threats, and then he'll have a massive lead in development. So uh, so when I see an opportunity to get a developing move in, like knight bd7, I, I generally tend to go for it. And it's not a bad policy in general. It's just right here. It looks like knight, knight h5 is probably more to the point, trying to hold on to that uh, f4 pawn. Okay, so knight there and we're out of the opening book and um, no longer do I have the advantage because um, he can just grab this pawn. The material is now even and uh, you know I have this funny pawn structure on the king side. Very very typical of the king's gambit. Things are just kind of messed up. But you know my opponent doesn't play perfect moves either. Um, let's see I continued with knight b6 kicking his bishop. Uh, he throws in this check which is good and I block and now we get this exchange um, but this did not bother me too much, although, um, let's say I took with the B knight. Um, it, I am giving up the bishop pair here, which was a, I was a bit reluctant to do because that's one of the compensations I might have had. But, uh, um, well, he's, he doesn't have the bishop pair either, so I guess it's uh, about even from that perspective. Um, then he played bishop to g5, pinning my knight, which is logical. But um, the way to keep the edge here, apparently, is um, knight to... Knight to c3 to keep the edge for white, uh, defending the d pawn, which is loose. So he defends it this way by pinning my knight. And uh, But now I can grab this knight. So there was, there was kind of two things going on. Um, if we back up, let's see. If, is knight c3 so wonderful? Can't I just do the same thing? Knight c3. Ah. Now the, the point is, uh, after knight c3, this knight is defending the pawn, and the bishop is still defending this knight. So everything is held together. Um, after bishop g5, it meets one threat, but then it leaves uh, it leaves the knight here un under protected. So I grab the knight. Um, it's really just uh, winning a pawn back. And so if we count, it's four to three over here and three to two over here. Yeah. So the material is once again even, and uh, slight edge for white. But <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe uh, if you give the computer long enough to grind on it, it looks like I I've survived the opening reasonably well, and then we just uh, continue to play a game here from this somewhat. Uh, messed up position. Often the kind of thing you get into with the king's gambit. Um, I thought it was a good idea to set up this discovery here. The engine likes uh, the immediate bishop takes c3. Yeah, I can mess up his pawns and give up a bishop for a knight. 
it's, it's not a bad idea actually okay but I, I set up this tactic and he just castles to get out of it and I castle and now he takes the knight and uh, again I guess uh, that's not quite the most accurate move queen to d3 continuing to develop and maybe threatening to come in here with a check and uh, pick up uh, one of my loose pawns looks like that's uh, good for good for white okay so he takes and uh, we get a position which is once again about even although he does pick up the g pawn in any case I play queen e oh he played queen e4 and I go with the check over here and uh, then I pick up the uh, the knight I decide to trade and grab the c pawn here oh oh I took the um, the d pawn instead of the c pawn so what have we got? Three to three and two to two. And his pawns over here are messed up and my pawns over here are messed up. Really uh, a very even position. So I've survived all the complications and got to uh, uh, just a situation with rooks and, uh, and queen. Um, I should have grabbed the C pawn here. And uh, queen takes C3. Yeah, I guess I didn't spot this tactic. If I take the C pawn, I'm threatening his rook in the corner. So if he takes my rook, I take his rook. So I can just go ahead and take that pawn right now. Instead, I defended my rook, threatening to take the pawn, and he just drops back and defends the c-pawn. So let's see. He had a better move there? No, I guess it's still about even. I have four pawns against his five pawns, but uh, his pawns are, are weak here. I, I can probably pick up one of these guys. So he starts pushing. Oh, I push my pawn to, to fix his structure over here. And uh, he brings his rook out to threaten <laughs> threaten a, a mate through my rook. It was, it was creating a virtual pin on my rook, and I wanted to have that free to move, so I played the move b6. Um, so he continues with rook f1, forming a battery. And uh, let's continue on. Um, I'm even a little bit better here, it looks like, with this exchange. Here's another chance for me to grab on, um, on c3, and I really should take it this time. Uh, after the exchange of queens, we get into an endgame where it seems, at first, he's a little bit better. Um, although it's uh, still not entirely clear. Um, you know, we're both not going to play the most accurate moves. But I guess uh, white should probably win this endgame with correct play. But as we go on, you'll see actually those places I had a chance to draw it. So I, I get some counterplay going with my pawns on the queen side. And he has to retreat and round up that pawn before it becomes dangerous. And that gives me some time to uh, bring my king over here and stop this pawn from crashing through. And uh, he wasted a tempo with that pawn move. And now I've gotten over here to a position where I've sort of blockaded his pawns. And uh, although there's a half a point advantage to white in this position, I, I should be able to hold it. Um, and I guess I should just be sitting still. The engine is recommending moving the rook to this square, which would keep his king from coming to the f-file. He didn't play the f-file anyway. Um, and uh, so I'm just trying to keep my rook active. It's not too bad, but I, I probably could have just sat here. And anyway, this, this move c6 was a, a blunder, apparently. Now that's not at all clear to me. What do I have to play? I have to play rook d1, it says. Okay, it's not that c6 is a blunder so much as uh, there's only one move to keep my uh, uh, drawing chances alive, which is rook d1, going after uh, checks on the back rank, I guess, driving his king back. After sink six, he should win, but actually there's even one more position. Yeah, right here, <laughs> where uh, he makes a slightly inaccurate move. Um, let's see, what should he have played instead of bringing his rook down there? Just uh, king g4. Followed by king h4. That's That doesn't make any sense. I don't know if there's a plan for, uh, for white to make progress. Maybe um, rook to f4 is a plan. Rook here to here to chase my king back and then um, and then start moving the pawns forward. That's probably <coughs> although my 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 rook is guarding the square. Not yeah, it's not so easy for white to make progress. Um, yeah, with an evaluation like that, there's certainly a win for white in this position. But I'm not sure I know exactly what his plan is. King g4. All right, let's let's try a few moves here. King g4. C5. King h4, going back. Now, that's what doesn't make any sense. So suppose I just sit still here. I move my rook to the side. Rook down to e7 now. Ah, okay. So maybe the point is just to run me out of moves. 
Um, I can move my rook here, say. Now, oh, I can't move my rook there. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, that's the point. The point of moving his king back and forth is this rook really wants to stay on this um, row to hold on to things, protect the king, and um, and it has no squares it can go to. If it moves to this side, then the rook can come down. Anyway, what happened in the game is he brought the rook down right away, and that gives me a shot. I can play rook d4 check, which I did, and the king uh, dropped back to g3, and now I can just take this pawn <laughs> with my king. And uh, it's a draw once again, but I, uh, I I don't know how I missed that idea in the game. So I, I gave some more checks, and uh, this is just losing uh, because my rook is now out of play, and he rounds up the rest of my pawns. And in a few moves, he uh, checkmates me, and so that was that was my last chance there. Just goes to show how tricky these uh, rook and pawn end games are. You have to uh, keep your eyes open for those uh, possibilities, and. Uh, also, the use of Zugzwang to get my rook out of uh, out of position was was critical there to making progress. Okay, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.